Burley So. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Burley So. I'm your host, Purified, and today we've got hatch video number four. This one, we're going to take a look at how you can take a vector image, do a little editing to it, and then import it into Hatch so that you can auto digitize your own embroidery design. And would you look at that? It's a Valentine's Totoro. <laughs> Welcome back everybody, thanks for being here. As you heard, today's video is about Hatch, with a little bit of Inkscape. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a vector image, a little Totoro that I previously drew, just on my own. Then we'll modify it uh, in the spirit of Valentine's Day, and I'll show you how to turn it into a awesome embroidery design using Hatch. All right, so I'm just going to jump right in with Inkscape here. And if you're unfamiliar with Inkscape, it's a free vector drawing program, graphics drawing program that you can download. And it's open source, but this is for drawing. And it's really nice because when you make something, you make it out of parts. So you can change the parts, move the parts around, group them together, make them one, combine the paths comes in very handy and in this case I have drawn drawn this Totoro previously and I figured well why don't I take the chest markings and for Valentine's Day I could just replace those with hearts and have a cute little Valentine's Totoro decoration for for the stove we've got some towels that we made so what I'm doing is I'm just taking the uh, Bezany curve tool. I'm not quite sure how you pronounce that, but you can go ahead and create nice little arcs and shape little objects any way that you want using the different features of this tool. And I'm not going to get into too much detail. There's plenty of tutor uh, tutorials out there for Inkscape. Um, maybe someday I'll do a, a couple. I don't. I really don't think so, but. So you never know, but you can search it out and learn to use Inkscape. And you see, I've got, you know, I can't really draw very well, pers you know, myself. So, um, but I've got a heart here that I've roughly shaped. And with the tools, I can easily make those arcs um, nice and round and then give this some, some shape. And I've drawn some pretty interesting things, obviously the Totoro. So it's, I think if I can do it, uh, any, any of you watching could learn how to do it as well. So I'm just going to make a heart here and then uh, I'm making it a little bit bigger, but I'll, I'll, I'll reduce the size and we're going to replace the chest markings with heart, with the hearts. And now that we have our, our hearts shaped the way that we want, I'll go ahead and fill them. So we've got a solid black and then I like to remove the border because then I'm only working with one thing. Uh, it's just something that I do, uh, whatever way you learn, whatever way you like. So we filled these, and some of the chest markings are bigger, some of them are smaller, so we'll just scale our heart, and you can see it's got a little lean to it, so maybe we'll we'll flip it on each, you know, do one the left side of the, the Totoro, and then the right side facing the other. So now you can see that the hearts are just about done. Uh, they do have that lean to them, and you can see I flipped them on the right on the horizontal to get them all pointing towards the center. Now this middle one is in the middle, so I'm gonna just adjust it so it's not leaning to one side or the other, and I'll just put it in path mode and move the bottom node so it's centered, and then I can zoom out and then I can replace that last original marking with the heart. And then we'll have our completed Totoro. 
Um, this is going to be a different Totoro than what I actually stitch out because I've already completed one that I stitched that I filmed, so it's kind of in a backwards order, but it's the same principle, so. And on this at particular recording, I went a step further, and I'll show you a little clip of what I did here. I decided to draw a balloon um, and have Totoro hold a little heart balloon. As I said, this isn't what I ended up stitching out in this video, but this just shows you some of the possibilities that you can do. I just basically took one of the hearts and turned it into a balloon, added a, you know, a line and put some nodes in there to give it a little wave and smaller line and then enabled the outline for the balloon and changed the color of that. But what we're going to do next is change the colors of all of these items and then we're gonna pop this or a image of a totoro without the balloon into hatch while i'm doing this i also want to point out that the nice thing about a vector graphic drawing program is that the colors are pretty simple meaning that they don't have a lot of different shades to them so when you go when it comes time to narrow down your colors in hatch uh, it's a lot easier everything's kind of where it should be for the most part and you don't have to do a lot of work when it comes to uh, dealing with millions or thousands and or hundreds even of uh, shades not that hatch can't convert that but it's just a lot cleaner and a lot easier this way all right, so let's import our image into Hatch. And you can see it's a little big, so we're going to bring it down to the right size for our hoop. And I'll make it four inches wide, and that includes the little white border too, but that'll be fine. So it'll be about three and a half stitched out maybe. And we've got that. So now we'll go ahead and auto-digitize, and then it'll give us our color reduction for the prep work and we'll bring it down to uh, I think six colors because if we go too far we lose the face there so we'll bring it back up to six and you can locate the colors and see what everything is and there's some artifacting in there but when you digitize typically it won't pick up minor discrepancies like that but we're going to merge it just to make sure so I'll show you how to do that in a second I'm just going through locating all the colors and seeing kind of what lies with what. I can't get rid of that color because the eyes would go too. I think in the later version of this, I made the eyes white around that outside there to eliminate that whole part of it. But you can see I merged two colors together there. And then we're just going to check and see if we can get rid of one more artifacting color. And I think I can line this up with, not that gray, but with this light gray here and the black. I can put those two together. So I'll hold down, I believe it's shift and then merge. And then now we've got, we've got it narrowed down to basically four colors. So once you're happy with your color reduction, you can just click OK. And you can see the outside's white as well as the stomach. Um, we'll take care of that in a minute. But first, we want to adjust our uh, fill and detail settings here. So we'll go ahead and mark which, which is fill and which is details. And then you could rearrange here. You also have the option to locate the different colors as in, in the previous step. And then there's a few other features that you can play with as well. But for now, we're just gonna make sure that we've got our fill and our details set correctly. And you can readjust the order if you wanted to do that. Uh, there's the locate feature and it looks all good. So we'll click okay and it digitizes it and there's our stitching. We wanna get rid of this outside part because uh, we don't need that. So I put it into, I took it out of true view so I could get a better look at it. And I'll just delete that outside part, drag this over. That's the image underneath. 
and now we're just left with our design. Go back to True View, and I want to I want to play with the the stitch texture a little bit here. So I'll show you how to do that. So I just simply double click the area that I wanted to look at the fill. And now you can see I changed it to number 31 in the pattern. And that looks pretty cool. I like that. So make sure you play around with the different settings on different fill angles and whatnot. But the next thing we're going to do is going to get ready for our, our lettering. And I'm going to group all these together. And I want to move my object to the bottom so they got room on top. But I can't because the hoop is locked to auto center on my object. So what I'm going to do is go to software settings and embroidery settings and then I'm going to change it to manual down here and then that way I can go ahead and manipulate my object and not have to worry about the hoop centering around it now that I've got my Totoro my Valentine's Totoro the way I want it I'm going to go to my lettering and monogramming toolbox on the left and I'm going to open up the lettering properties and I can type in what I want my text to be and we're gonna go with be my Totoro and you can see there's several different types of fonts I'm just gonna simply pick one that's appropriate I think if I'd like to get tricky on this one I'd like to change the O's to hearts but that might be a pretty big undertaking. I might work on that one with the one that's holding the balloon. Um, I'm just trying to keep this in a timely video and a good place to start. We'll get more advanced as we make more videos. So I've got my text. I want to put a curve to it. So you can see right here, I, I put a curve to it. And there's several different selection in the baseline properties there that you can choose from different types of ways to line up your text and also art and other center centering features and advanced settings that you can play with. I suggest just playing with these different settings and getting a look that you, you like. And um, I wanted less of a bend in here, so I think I changed the degree of the bend on this one. I might have missed the recording of that part, but um, I, I did do that, so... But yeah, this is looking really good right now. And I think um, I'm going to get it ready to export. So there's just a few little final steps that we need to do here. And one of them is to adjust. I, I like to use the uh, optimized color change feature. It seems like a, it does really good things. It, it optimizes. In this case, it added from four to five color changes. And you can see here there's this weird extra white but I can simply delete that. And I don't know what that would have been had I have not done that. So I'm just gonna, it broke that out for some reason. Now I can just simply go ahead and trash it. You can see the little trash can button right here in the bottom right hand corner. And now that's gone. And everything's sequenced the way that I want. And the other thing that I like to do before I export is I like to use the auto fabric under the customized designs toolbox and choose the type of fabric that I'm using and apply that as well as get my suggestion for my stabilizer. So this will be terry cloth. It's a little uh, hand towel for the kitchen. And you can see I got a suggestion there for topping of sol water soluble and then one sheet of medium tear away for the bottom. And now we can go ahead and export. And we'll just go to design output. And first I'm gonna save it as a EMB file. That's a file that you can readily edit any of these properties in. It's the original raw file that you created. So those are important to keep. Same thing with uh, Inkscape. There's the SVG uh, file which maintains its original components as well. And then you can go ahead and export it and depending upon what type of machine, you, what type of machine you have. I've got a brother so I'm going to export it to PES or PES and now I'll show you a quick overview of how I prepped it for stitching. There's plenty of videos. You can check one out on my video here. 
but I just use the Pellin stuff that you can get in the store. It's the medium weight tearaway stabilizer and the water soluble top stabilizer. And then just some spray adhesive that just happens to be Loctite and hooped it all together. And now we'll stitch it here real quick. I'll cut out a lot of it, fast forward. But I just want to say, as always, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching the show. I hope it helps. I hope you guys are enjoying the videos. Uh, leave your comments below and try to help each other out on the on the on the comments if you can if you know the answer to something i don't get to them as much it's it, it's been pretty hard for me to answer comments regularly with my work schedule and family life so i apologize for that but there'll be more videos i'll keep putting out the videos we've got another another hatch video coming up i don't recall what exactly the theme's going to be but we'll, de we'll dive deeper into the world of Hatch. And I hope everybody had a happy and safe New Year's. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Thanks for watching Burley So.